So with that, I'll let Fox 519 get right into Eye on the Economy. And when we come back, we have a little surprise guest. So stay right there. This is the voice of the American Redoubt. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If your money isn't in your hands or in gold and silver, it isn't yours. And now they're trying to take it all away from you. No matter what country you live in, here or Russia, the attack on your financial security is here. And tonight I have some major, major financial news that will affect all of us in the readout immediately. Stay tuned, because this is Sunday, March 23rd, and I am Fox 519, bringing you the news that matters to your pocketbook as patriots and preppers. This is I in the Economy, brought to you by Radio Free Readout. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, imagine if you would for a moment, you head down to your local Winco, Albertsons, Fred Meyer, or Costco, and you load up your groceries and head to the checkout line, only to find that they no longer accept Visa and MasterCard. That is exactly what's happening in Russia at this exact moment. This week, Reuters is reporting that Visa and MasterCard have both cut off service to seven major banks in Russia. So what, as you were saying? Well... As you're aware, Visa and MasterCard control approximately 91% of all debit and credit transactions in the world. Only JCB and China Pay and a host of smaller processors control the flooded flow of monies through the others. Here's the thing. If you hit people in those countries in the pocketbook and make their money worth nothing, guess what? Their elected officials get really ticked and then complain. And now those voices are going to start be reaching Comrade Putin. This has to be one of the stupidest moves by our president. Sure, shut off Visa and MasterCard. That'll hurt for a short time. But Russia has already threatened to leave the SWIFT money system and start their own. They're threatening to leave the dollar for good. In my opinion, this move will only put off what we know is coming soon. Russia will sell the rest of the U.S. holdings, and China will join them, and the dollar will die. I hope you're all ready. And normally I'd bring you a second and third story uh, for Eye uh, for in the Economy, but what I'm about to tell you is so big and so traumatic that it's quite possibly could uh, really change life in the readout as we know it. Um, here it is. Your paper money in your wallet is no longer going to be honored by the Fed. Yes, I said that right, and I'll tell you why. This week, the Fed began eliminating the currency in order to push us into a cashless society. Uh, how do you know this, I, you ask? Well, I was part of a meeting at the bank that I work, out, work at in the readout. It was an operations meeting, and I was told this in person and in a memo. The new regulation takes place when your bank ships money from their vault to a central processor like Loomis Fargo or Garda. This new regulation states that if a bill is heavily creased, wrinkled, soiled, or stained, or thought to contain bodily waste, it can and will be rejected by the Fed and sent back to the cash processor, being Loomis Fargo or Garda. Then it's shipped back to your bank. Well, what happens when it's shipped to the bank? Well, nothing. Your bank or credit union is going to take the loss, and the Fed gets to write off an IOU known as the currency off its books. Now, how does that affect us in the readout? I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you with a story. Let's imagine, if you would, your son or daughter has been given $20 from, uh, from grandma or grandpa, from his or her stash at their home, for doing some yard work or working in the garden. Yeah, the $20 bill, you know, it's a little old, it's a little wrinkled, maybe some creases, maybe a bit faded. Maybe it's been because you're, they've kept it uh, in a coffee can or somewhere that's, uh, you know, not the most ideal conditions. But hey, it's money nevertheless, right? So you take your little one down to the local savings and loan or to the credit union or whatever, and they walk up to the counter and hand the bill to the teller, and they say, I'd like to deposit this. Then the teller says this, I'm sorry, little Bobby or Susie. I can't take that money. It's unfit. I can't touch it. Here's an envelope and a special baggie along with a letter. You can send it back to the Federal Reserve Bank, and they'll exchange it for a new bill. You can't believe your ears. You're flabbergasted. You ask the parent, or you as the parent, excuse me, say, can't I just exchange this for another bill? No. I'm sorry, the teller says. We don't take unfit currency anymore. It's up to you to handle it. It's just a Fed and bank policy. Yes, my friends in the readout, that is happening right now. And it's going to be affecting banks all across the readout immediately. This is how central banks prepare themselves for currency collapse. They stopped accepting their own currency. Sure, if a dollar or $20 has blood, mold, or other nasty, quote, stuff on it, it should be handled in a special way. And yes, nobody should have to touch that. But that's what rubber gloves are for, right? But now that the definition is of unfit currency has been changed to include heavily wrinkled, creased, or faded, banks can and do have the right to reject that currency. Now, let me ask you a question. What would happen if the stores have stop accepting cash because their bank deposits are being returned back to them due to the fact that they're unfit currency? Well, they will probably demand that you use your debit or credit card. 
And remember, just like when Russia, those can be shut off at a moment's notice. Imagine this. Russia and China sell their holdings. The debit credit card system goes down. The dollar dies. There you go. I'm telling you, Redoubt, things are going to get bad very quickly. And I'm sure the banks may or may not make the choice officially to begin rejecting currency on those bases. But I'm going to tell you, my bank is. I'm not going to tell you which one, but I'm just telling you, my bank is. Just like I said in the past, if you don't hold your cash in your hand, if it's not gold or silver, it isn't yours. You've got to prepare yourself accordingly for this. Finally, my advice to you this week is twofold. If you have old currency in a stash at your house, get it changed out this week at your bank. Do it subtly. Don't go in there announcing that they're going to be rejecting currencies. Many banks tellers don't know this yet. It's the truth. I heard it from the horse's mouth this week. But like I said before, many countries have just, before collapse, have demanded their citizen use only new currency. And finally, get outside. With the amazing weather we've been having in the readout, now is the time to prep your garden space for your food independence. Sure, don't plant yet. It's still too cold. But when your dollars are no longer accepted because they're, quote, unfit, you will still have a way to make sure your family is fed. Thanks again for listening this week. And for Eye on the Economy and Radio Free Readout, this is Fox 519 signing off. God bless.